Hey everyone, I'm Richard and this is it, GTX 1060, the first of Nvidia's mainstream graphics cards based on its new Pascal architecture. Priced at $250, that puts it on collision course with AMD's Radeon RX 480. Well, kind of. AMD's 8GB card is a bit cheaper and has more memory, while the 4GB card is a lot cheaper and still a highly capable performer. Nvidia's pitch for the 1060 is compelling though, GTX 980 performance. And that is a pretty big deal. It's not even two years ago that the 980 was the latest and greatest. It launched in September 2014 as the new GPU king with a price point to match $550. Now it was fast out of the box and it overclocked like a demon. And if Nvidia can bring that kind of package to the mainstream, well that's well worth checking out. So today I'm going to be looking at this, the Nvidia reference card, the Founders Edition. Styling wise, it shares the same design language as the more expensive GTX 1070 and GTX 1080. And there's a definite sense of quality to it. Port selection on the rear is also a match for the more expensive models. Once again, we have Dual-Link DVI, three display ports, and HDMI 2.0. Good stuff. However, the cheaper card gets a plastic enclosure, and one thing I wasn't too impressed with was the complete lack of SLI connectors. I think we could have got some really interesting results from this card in SLI, and it does feel a little mean-spirited of Nvidia to remove this feature. But for me, the question is this. Has NVIDIA actually delivered on its promise of GTX 980 performance? Well, based on our testing, it seems that it certainly does in some games, but not so much in others. Take a look at this. Assassin's Creed Unity, 1080p, Ultra High, FXAA. GTX 1060 is offering a tight lock here on GTX 980 performance. And here in Far Cry Primal, we can see that it's actually a touch faster. I mean, nothing game changing, but it's showing that the new card is capable of hitting its required performance level. And we see a similar scenario here with The Witcher 3. Now, according to our benchmarks here, GTX 1060, it's about 4% faster. However, in other cases, the results aren't quite as impressive. Crisis 3 here, it's 11% faster on GTX 980. And with Rise of the Tomb Raider on DX12, the 980 has a 7% advantage. So yeah, by and large, I'd say, well, you are getting a GTX 980 style experience, but there will be games where the 1060 is a little off the pace. But it's the RX 480 that's going to be Nvidia's biggest challenger here. So how does performance stack up there? You're looking at around 11 to 12% of additional performance with this card. Rise of the Tomb Raider, even with its new Async Compute DX12 patch, well the 1060 is still way ahead there. But games that work well on AMD hardware can still see the RX 480 pull ahead. Yes, Hitman on DX12, it runs 11% faster on the AMD card. But there are some interesting results even in DX11 land. So take a look at the division here. The GTX 1060 is faster, but only by around 3%. Now, we're going to be doing a lot more DX12 testing soon, but one thing that is clear is that Nvidia's Pascal architecture does indeed support that all-important asynchronous compute feature. So this, well, this is TimeSpy, the new 3 d Mark benchmark built for DirectX 12 from the ground up. And yeah, we can run this bench with both async compute on and off. Now, we see a bigger uplift on the AMD card with async compute enabled. And the end result is that both cards achieve very, very similar scores. So yeah, more extended DX12 testing between these two cards in actual games should be fascinating. Okay, so I think we've kind of covered everything here. There is no knockout blow for AMD here with the GTX 1060. This new product, it costs a bit more, but on balance, I kind of think you get a bit more. It's a fair deal for an impressive product, but it's not a game changer. But one area where it does fall short is in terms of memory allocation. Now it's 8 gigs for AMD with the RX 480 and 6 for Nvidia with the GTX 1060 here. Now the question is, of course, does that actually matter? Well, the bottom line is that right now, even 4 gigs is enough for 1080p gaming. The market where GTX 1060 is really targeted, and that's kind of reflected in all of the benchmarks we carried out, really. But there are some scenarios where more memory is a requirement, and none more so than Mirror's Edge and its hyper mode. Running that head-to-head -head with RX 480, Nvidia is still ahead, despite the mammoth VRAM requirement. But regardless, hyper mode, 
really is overkill and adds little to the Mirror's Edge experience. I think the bottom line is this really. If future proofing is more important to you than improved performance in the here and now, go for the RX 480. Otherwise, the GTX 1060 looks like a pretty good deal and it's much more amenable to overclocking. On this Founders Edition, I could add 210 megahertz to the core and RAM could be pushed up to nine gigabits per second. And overall, this adds anything from 11 to 15% of additional performance. And it's ridiculously easy to get this OC. I think the bottom line there is that 1060 kind of works more as a GTX 970 replacement. More performance, more RAM, better efficiency, and with a discount on top. And let's conclude with a quick look at power efficiency here. Now RX 480, it's not bad, but GTX 1060 is handing in a considerable improvement. More performance then, and lower energy consumption. Okay, so look, that's where we're at for now. Do remember to check out the swathes of benchmarks we have available for GTX 1060 going live with this review. We'll be keeping up with all the new GPU launches, so do subscribe to Digital Foundry to ensure you don't miss a thing. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.